everyone for joining this I, this Region 5 uh, Houston section IEEE USA joint webinar. Um, I want to thank you very much for all your joining. People are still joining, by the way. Uh, I am actually going to turn this over to our Master of Ceremonies, Chris Sanderson, so he can introduce our speaker and uh, prompt you guys on how, how we, we, you'll be asking questions throughout the uh, presentation. Take it over, Chris. Thanks, Daryl. I really appreciate uh, you uh, working with us and facilitate this uh, presentation. First of all, I'd like to apologize to uh, everyone for the numerous uh, emails as well as some of the miscommunication that's uh, taken place in reference uh, to this uh, webinar. Uh, as you can probably tell, a lot of us are volunteers and this is not part of our regular day profession. And so sometimes we struggle a little bit to make sure that everyone is informed about the correct information. Uh, I was told that recently we did have some technical di difficulties uh, in reference to the server. So that is something that is definitely way past my pay grade and uh, thanking the, uh, the IT gods for working with us and getting this um, started for us. With that being said, again, my name is uh, Christopher Sanderson. I am the uh, South Area Chair for Region 5, as well as the Houston Section Chair. And I've been a uh, IEEE member for a, a number of years. But um, I'm here to, to introduce Mr. James Mercer, uh, who is also a IEEE member. And I'm gonna read a little bit about his uh, bio. Uh, James is a licensed uh, professional engineer uh, in the state of Texas, within, as well as in five other states. Uh, he is an uh, American Society of Civil Engineers life member, as well as an IEEE a life senior member, having joined both of those uh, in college. In the Central Texas uh, section, uh, his duties include the membership development chair, senior membership upgrade coordinator, as well as a uh, SAMI IEEE recipient. Um, he is also the past chair of the joint chapter of Pi Square, PES, PEL, IAS, IES, uh, as well as the current treasurer. His nickname is uh, Honey Badger. <laughs> uh, and um, he was uh, recently received the George F. Uh, McClure uh, Citation Honor uh, recipient uh, for um, his dedication to IEEE uh, and the uh, chapter. Now, the one thing that uh, I don't see in your bio amongst all the other things that you've done, uh, James, and I know you fairly well, is that how many senior members have you um, been able to get nominated as, or, or referenced uh, uh, so far? Uh, somewhere between uh, 60 and 90, I believe. Okay, so that makes you a, a pretty good uh, subject matter expert at this point in time. Okay. <laughs> well, again, James, I really do appreciate you taking uh, time out. And just to give you a little bit more historical information, uh, we had probably over 975 people to actually register for this. And so it's going to be interesting to see the number of uh, people who actually participate. Uh, for all those who are on the line, you will receive a PDH certificate for your time that you spent. The system will automatically capture your time in and time out. So if you do get disconnected, please uh, feel free to log back in. PDH certificates will be uh, sent to all those participants who have attended the majority of the presentation. And that means it's gonna be an hour and you need to at least attend at least three quarters of that hour in order for you to receive that PDH certificate. Please, uh, we're gonna hold questions to the end because we only have an hour. Please use the uh, chat box. Myself and Daryl will be uh, going through the uh, chat box, identifying the questions for James to uh, answer uh, at, the end, at the conclusion of his presentation. With that being said, I'm gonna turn it over to the honey badger. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. One of the questions is, what is senior membership? Why do we want it? Why is it needed? First, it is an IEEE membership grade and an IEEE professional honor. Some people ask, well, do other societies have this? In a fashion, but not the same way. For example, in the American Society of Civil Engineers, being a strong engineering based or professional engineer based organization. One is either a student member 
an associate member or a member. To get promoted from associate member to member, you must be licensed in your state, province, or country. That's the requirement. I am a full member being a PE. IEEE being a broader and not necessarily professional engineer uh, based organization doesn't have that. So what we do have is senior membership. So just as it takes us a member, a minimum of four years, and that's a minimum to become a licensed professional engineer and therefore a full member of ASCE, it takes us 10 years of work experience, very similar to the PE, to become a senior member. <clears throat> so senior member is not something that's just handed out along with the Cracker Jack box. No, it's something you need to apply for and you should apply for it. Some people wonder, what if I'm not qualified? Don't worry about that. Send me the, or your, uh, whatever section you're in, send your section senior member chair. If you can't get a hold of that person, send it to me. You will find my email in here somewhere. And I will help you. I will help, uh, whoever will help you review your application, get it lined up, and then uh, help you get uh, references. We're going to go through all of that in this pre uh, presentation. Senior members can self-nominate or be nominated. Sections and societies can nominate a member. Whenever I nominate anyone, I nominated that person from Central Texas section. Candidates must be engineers, scientists, educators, you can see this right here, read it yourself, have experience reflecting professional maturity. In other words, you did an improvement over the 10 years. You have 10 improving years of experience, not one year experience 10 times. That does make a difference. Have been in the professional practice at least 10 years and your academic uh, time does count. And we have a fixed formula for that. We will go through that. Some uh, show significant performance over a period of time. And again, we're talking about five years of professional growth, not one year five times. Uh, here's the bottom one. Prospective members can apply, but first must join IEEE. I've had people saying, I want to join as a senior member. That's nice. But it's sort of like the time I was a student, I was broke and I kept praying, Lord, help me win the lottery. Please, I need the money. Help me win the lottery. And every week I prayed and every week I wasn't a winner. And one day the voice of the Lord spoke, said, James, meet me halfway. Buy a ticket. In this case, becoming an IEEE member is buying a ticket. You can join IEEE and immediately apply to be a senior member, provided you meet the other qualifications. That's okay, but you must be a member. If anyone is watching this broadcast and you're not an IEEE member, don't 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 back out. We will send you to the right place, which I've got coming up in another slide. Get your membership and then but keep watching this. You'll need it. First thing you need to do is go to our web page. Right, let's see, control A. Okay, IEEE.org right here. And we'll click on membership, get the drop down list, come down here, it says member grade elevation. Click on that, and this is what the page looks like. Scroll down, and we come to senior member grade, fellow life member, it has all of the IEEE grades, how they fit, but here's senior member grade. Now, if up here, membership, you take out grade elevation and write senior. What you will get is this right here and this page. And again, it has all the details that we mentioned a moment ago. How many years do your academic degrees count for and under what condition and so on. So there's where you will find it very easily. But going back to where we were, 
Oh, this is that same page continued down about, and there's an apply now button. However, you can click on that and it will take you to the application or going back to right here, individuals may apply for senior grade online, click right there. And either way you do it, the previous orange button or that blue line, you're going to wind up right here, senior member application. Uh, must be engineers, scientists, educators, technical executives, originators, and IEEE designated fields. I have had people say, I don't think I qualify. Don't worry about that. Come talk to me first, then we'll decide if you qualify or how, what we need to say to make you qualify. It's more a case of semantics than hard facts. Unlike, for example, ASCE, you're not a PE or a PEng in Canada, or not licensed in your country, no, you're not a full member, don't even apply. By the way, one thing I want to back up very quickly right here, life member. I've had people ask me, James, how do I apply for a life member? What do I need to do? Trust me, you don't. This will come to you from heaven. When you have the requisite number of years of membership, and your age combines, and I don't remember whether it's rule of 80 or rule of 60, but something like that. Must be 70, not 60. At that point, if you have continuous IEEE membership, your years of membership and your age total a given set point number, at that point, you will be informed by IEEE. You are now a life member or a life senior member as it is. So yes, that comes automatically. Don't worry, the one we're worrying about here is senior member grade. Uh, experience reflecting professional maturity. Again, that will be reflected in our write-up. Uh, oh, Bruce sent me, it's 100. Thank you, Bruce. When they total 100, and when you're old like I was, when I even went to school, it makes it real easy. Have been in professional practice at least 10 years. That's the, and again, your degrees count, show significant performance. That's what we've said before. Begin the nomination process. We click right there. And, or just to scroll it down, we click here, we get this box. At this point, what we put in is your membership number. In this case, this is mine and then we press Pokemon Go. It will give you this curling red thing, go get a cup of coffee, come back, let your coffee cool, and about that time the screen will pop up and chances are some of you will get this. Notice I got that with my number. Our records indicate you are not currently an active IEEE member. I am not qualified to apply for senior member. And you're probably thinking, oh, say what? The answer is, I'm not qualified to apply for senior member because I am a senior member. That's one of the downsides of this web page. But it shows you what sort of grade you must have. So having to back up, in order to show you what I need to show you, because I can't show you with my number, I'm going to pick on one of the members of our Pi Square chapter committee, who is now a senior member himself, Sapan Vias. And the first question I get is nominator information. It could be self, or it could be, in my case, me. And I am nominating him on behalf of Central Texas section. I get a pop up menu or pop down menu. This information is not put in. This is there. That's part of your IEEE profile. If it's not correct, you need to sign in and get uh, correct your profile. If you have not created an IEEE profile, you need to. Scrolling down that page, is the nominee aware of this nomination? Yes, it can be a supply surprise. Normally, it's not. So, I check, yes, he is aware. Now, education, here's the breakout I was telling you about. Three years for your BS, four if you hold a bachelor and a master's, 
Although I am presuming that for those who go for uh, a first degree is master's degree, for example, one of my sisters, uh, I'm pretty sure they'll give you the four years credit. That's not something you pick up because you walk down the street. Five, if you hold a doctorate. Yes, it could easily take you longer than that. We will go into some of how things will fit, but the most we're giving you towards that straight up is five years. Ensure your IEEE profile is updated with your education information. Again, yes, you can go in, change your profile, and correct that. Present occupation. Well, we'll come to, this is your uh, school information. Where did you go to school? What's the name of the school? Where? What were you studying? What degree did you get? When did you start? When did you finish? By the way, Two of these aren't going to work. IEEE wants it in the format of month and year, not just graduated, but also started. And we're, they're critical about this. If you're not sure, I think when I started was September of 1981. It might have been August. I really don't remember. But I put down September. I, we're not going for precision like a survey, a land survey. We're just going approximately. Within a month, you're good. Here's what your university sheet looks like. Notice that the date started was left blank. I had to go back and beg this person, you have to come up with some dates for me. And that has to be filled in. Uh, your present occupation, your present occupation. Who are you working for? What's your title? Years of experience. By the way, not with this employer necessarily, your total years of experience. How many years have you been working? Designated fields. This is all that same page. We're just scrolling down. One fellow checked engineering. Yes, it was engineering. Uh, it, he also had done work in computer sciences, so I checked that. He had been a manager as well as had taught college classes, so I checked this. This is a case of check all that apply. If you check other, a uh, text box will open and let you write in something. But generally, this covers most of it right here. I did have one that checked other, we explained. And by the way, she's a senior member now today. So yes, we can, and does not have specifically an electrical engineering degree. I think it was uh, filmmaking, but the field she was working in, it applies and she's an IEEE member. Yes, it applies. From nominee information, we scroll over to professional experience. Right here, do not cut and paste your CVS or your resume. And it even says that right here. What we want is short, quick information and not the long express. You can really shorten this up. What you're going to do is put it in your dates, month, year to month, year, at that employer. Hi, hey, hey. employer. Yes. Hey, James, this is uh, Christopher. I, I want to reiterate that it's very important that people do not copy and paste their uh, resumes or vitas uh, into the system. Uh, you will get error codes and it will be very uh, frustrating. Lessons learned, lump number 10 for me. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. So, and notice I said maybe a short synopsis of your duties. I've seen it where it was just title, employer, location, and kept going. That's okay. And the reason is what I wrote right there, the details will fit in later. And this is very important to understand that your education employment dates cannot overlap without an explanation. But you cannot double dip on your claims of time. 
Here's an example, principal engineer, location, company location, date, what he was doing, very quickly written there. Prior to that, he was an electrical engineering intern, where, when, designing, and here's what he did. Again, this is all you need and possibly even less. We're just saying you were employed. If we need more details, we'll go to your CV or, or resume. We have a place to see the attachments tab right here. That's what it's talking about right there. That's where you will see the, uh, where you'll put those things. We now move over to significant performance and this is where Ms. Firestone used to say the rubber meets the road. This is where we have more trouble. What is really wanted? What's needed? I have seen people list literally this right here and say, therefore, I'm qualified to be a senior member. I'm sorry, this doesn't tell me enough. We want some good experience. And this is why it is intended to give the reviewer knowledge specifically of what you did related to some particular projects and how, how your contribution was significant. Yeah, again, significant contribution. When I was with Texas Department of Transportation, we advertised for a hydraulic engineer. This is open channel hydraulics, all the water that's over the road, under the bridge, through the culvert or down the ditch. That's what we dealt with. Minimum qualification, must have an engineering degree and five years open channel hydraulic experience. We had one guy applied and was really upset when he wasn't selected for interview because he had no degree, but he had 10 years experience as a diesel mechanic. I'm sorry, it doesn't count. So again, we're looking for the word significant. We are not looking for everything you ever did. We are looking for discrete, there's that word right there, projects within your post-college employment. I say generally post-college, let's say you were doing research work, we will cover that later. That, that counts. You must be able to show 60 months on a project or projects. I've had people hung up, I didn't have a five-year project. I have to be high up in the company for that. No, projects. Read that line. I've said it before. And by the way, that's no joke about the 400. It's supposed to be 5,000, but trust me, the three short, 4997. At first, when I was helping folks do this, yes, we were running, especially when the ones came from overseas, there apparently was a lot of coding in the document that when I cut and paste to drop those paragraphs in, they were too heavy. Now that I better understand the process, we're cutting it down. And by the way, my guidance document, which you will receive afterwards, is a work in progress. I just got through changing it 10 minutes before I signed in because of stuff that I learned. So I'm always learning this. And there's what I said before, what they've said, you can add, somebody added a three page uh, resume. That's fine, that's fine. That goes in attachments in case the panel members want to go back and just want a little, you said something here, but we want to see some details let them look in the resume if they need it. If we write it correctly, they won't need it, but it will be there. Here's an example for myself. I designed the collapse detection motors warning system. Uh, this is cover page and a few photos from a presentation on this system. Out of the, this is the bridge itself. It's three and a half miles long. At that time, there was no way to send a fiber optic signal that far. And then, uh, who's the big company? Rockwell came out with uh, 
a system that would transmit five miles without a repeater. And what we did was sent from a controller at one end of the bridge to the other and back. So we sent the signal through fiber optic cables. We had gates, we had beacons at the entrance, uh, each approach to the bridge. The idea that if the uh, signal is tripped, the gates, the railroad gates will drop, and, and then there will be the flashing beacons. They're spaced every 560 feet, except for that 800 foot, foot stretch, because that's a solid piece. But uh, if you see, the instruction was, if you see the lights flashing on your side, lock the brakes up. If you notice that your side is dark, but the other side is flashing, step on the gas. The collapse is behind you. Get away from it. We had to design the uh, power system from one end of the bridge, three, three and a half miles to the last beacon. So that if the, the bridge was broken, it would result in what I said, the ones after the break, it's out, keep driving. The ones before the break, it's flashing. And I was there for the installation. We used two pair of fiber optic cables to send and receive the signal. Fiber optic cable, in spite of you being told how delicate it is, doesn't really break. They say, don't twist it too tight, you'll lose signal, but there's no guarantee. We had to create on our own a system where if the cable shifted one way or the other, that what you're seeing here, it would snap the uh, uh, conductors and therefore trigger the alarm. Out of this project, I got two papers, one for IEEE, IEEE one for ASCE. Uh, the ASCE, I went into greater details on the electrical to make it understandable civil engineers for IEEE, I went into greater details on the traffic engineering aspect. Now, let's say I wrote this up for my senior member application, which actually I was a senior member already by then. From December 2001 to December 2003, 24 months. And by the way, all of this is in the Word document that you'll be sent. Uh, this paragraph right here. Notice another, uh, but, okay, take a moment to look through this. What was it? What did I have to do? What did it have to do with the community? And what else did I have to do to justify my time? That's why I'm claiming 24 months. Uh, we used to think, or I was instructed that we had to break that down to how much time was actually spent on the project, not on vacation, not working on other projects, but on this one project. And I have since been corrected that no, uh, the panel will just look at the dates and it's a pretty significant project. We'll give you 24 months, in this case, credit for it. Again, sometimes it's less. In 1991, I researched, developed, and documented testing commissioning procedures for relay technicians. This effort took six months. It was in 1991. What are you claiming? Tell us. Don't just say, in 1991, I did this. You guess how many months I should get because a guess is going to be one. You won't get it. Tell us what you're expecting. Here's another couple of examples. Developed a new image processing algorithm for separating iris area from the eyelids. Uh, key product, low cost, 12 months. March of 2017 to November 2018. This person uh, might have been able to claim uh, March to November, 20 months, but properly, uh, oops, properly his own ethics said well really i can with in good conscience claim 12 months on that 
Here's another one. June 2012 to February 2017. That's a period of five years. And what did he claim on that? Two years down here. Why did he claim two years instead of five? Because he knew at his level he was working other things that were stop and start. And the, and he may also have other things. And I'm going to show you that next. Remember the dates uh, for my project? Let's go back here. December 2001 to December 2003. Well, in February of 2003, it was put out to bid. And then nothing happened until June because the contractor has to get together materials, things like that. During this time, I had built up so much comp time that I was gone from the office for seven weeks. And of that time, I used eight hours of vacation. The rest was just comp time. What did I do? Took leave from Textile to work for Elk Electric on a USA project, Telecom Egypt, yeah, in Giza, Egypt. I tell what I did, supervising the crew, worked 60 hours a week for seven full weeks. I claimed two months right there. And that's good, right? Actually, it's a problem. This is overlapping the same period that I claimed 24 months. Okay, we have a conflict, can't do that. I could either skip this one entirely or I could reduce the other by two months Pick one because we cannot have overlaps. I think one of the biggest problems I see is overlaps. So if your employment overlaps, you're going to have to have an explanation, a solid justification. Whether your school and employment overlaps or two employers overlap. Now one fellow told about how he worked on a government project. It was shut down. He went to work for uh, a uh, consultant, but then he claimed overlapping time on the, the government project. Well, the contractor was given the contract to finish this up. Sorry, that fits over here, not over like this. You cannot double count the, the same months, and that's what you see that I've done here and can't do. Uh, here are some other examples. Or are these? Yeah. Again, you will see these in the written document. Now, research publications. Generally, the instruction that I recently received was that the office or the reviewers look at the date of a patent or the date of a paper. And they know it takes work. They generally give one year credit. So let's look at what uh, this friend of mine had. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And for that, he gets seven years. And I'm sure you're asking, oh, wait a minute. I thought you said a year each, except for one little problem. Remember what I said about overlaps. 2007, 2007, 2007. We can even we can either give one third of a year each, or we will just count the three of those as one year. There's no way you're going to get one year each in the same calendar year. So still seven years. Now, had I known about this rule or understood it at the time, uh, we could have shortened his application a whole lot simply because there's seven of the five years he needed because he's a PhD. Yes, right there. And it does make life easy. Attachments, resume, whatever description, the thing is, it has to be PDF, ping, JPEG. It cannot be a Word document. It will not accept it. You will get an error message. All you do 
open the Word document, print it to a JPEG or to a PDF. Okay, PDF, load it, you're done. Simple as that. Many people have sent me their resumes as Word documents. That's fine. But now let me save it as a JPEG in my files and uh, we're done. Next. And I covered that. And I've covered that also. And we'll someday we'll actually move. References. If I'm your nominator, you don't have to worry about references. I will assign them for you. Now. Hey, uh, James. Yes. You may want to clarify, uh, there are two application processes. The one is that you're actually nominating someone for senior membership and the other is being self-nominated where I have to go out and identify my references and things of that sort. Oh, well, that is correct. Uh, and that's also why I recommend going to the section because if the section recommends you, as you saw on one of the first slides here, then that counts as one reference. We only need two more. If you're self-nominating, uh, you still can go to the section because someone just yesterday uh, was a, another friend of, of uh, Chris's that uh, Chris referred him to me and I said, sure. The first thing I did was go in and change his uh, application from self-nomination to being nominated by the section. Well, it gives me control of the document, but that way I can make whatever corrections are necessary, but to help you get it in. So, uh, but you can do it yourself, and I will cover uh, later on exactly what you want in the way of a reference. It's not as bad as it sounds. So. We have about yeah. another 20 minutes, uh, James, just yes. to give you a time check. Yeah, I, 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 like a Baptist preacher, I set my watch where I could see it. Doesn't mean I'll pay attention to it, but I'll, I set it where I could see it. <laughs> What is important is your references are not character reference. I had one old fellow that absolutely refused to be a technical reference because I've never met the guy. You don't need to meet him. And let's look at some of this. The purpose is to be a pre previewer to help the ANA panel. So when I get your, if I get your application, if you go through me for nomination, what I'll do is look at your field. Is it computers? Is it software? Is it power? Is it electronics? Uh, power electronics? And I have a list, you'll see that in a moment, a list of different people, different qualifications, so that I try to assign the power energy people, the, the utility folks to review uh, utility uh, nominations, and get the electronics folks to view electronics nominations uh, and software folks for uh, and academics for academic nominations. So I try to assign those. And again, does not even need to know the applicant. That's one of the questions. However, your references must be at least the grade you're applying for. They can be fellows. They must be senior members. A life member is not necessarily a senior member. He can be a life senior member, a senior member, or a fellow. Here is the list that I keep, oops, didn't mean to do that, uh, of the people that I have. These are all senior members. Here is their area. Some I have gotten replies, some I haven't. Oh, okay, I don't know what. Here is the, uh, and I have to be careful of the list because if I add a name, it changes the numbers. But I use the reference number of this person. Right here, it says for Sepon Diaz, 9 and 15. That means I assigned him to candidates 9 and 15 to be references. Notice Sepon's number is 83. Over here, we look at 9, we see an 83. And 15 has already been moved uh, down below 
uh, to the because uh, this person was awarded senior member. So that's where Sapan was right there. I have a color coding to tell me what's the status of your application. Where, and both these boxes, meaning gray, means both uh, uh, references have submitted. Uh, this is our list again. In the uh, one of the questions as a reference writer that you will receive. Now we're going into what you as a reference writer will need. By the way, all of you senior members, one, you need to know this to help your reference writers, unless the reference writer is already familiar with all, all of this. And you need to know it because if you go through me, I track your name, your email, and the fact that you're a senior member, and I don't mind reaching out and putting the bite on you, I need a favor back. It takes you about 20 minutes to, of time to write a reference. First question is, do you know the candidate personally? Yes or no? If yes, following questions will be asked. How many years you've known the candidate? What is your professional relationship? And by the way, if the answer is no, how did you become the familiar? And what I tell folks is, simply put down, I was assigned by the section to write a reference. Okay, that's good. Here's one right. Candidate came to a senior member event. You can say, uh, Mr. and Mrs. XX spoke with a senior member event. Uh, at the event, other senior members spoke to him about his professional background based on event review as, as to provide a reference for the candidate. Your candidate will get your full application, your CV, resume, uh, experience. Uh, uh, significant performance, he gets everything in your application to look at. And then things that you can say, things that don't, uh, they don't hurt. If you haven't met the candidate, but say I was selected to be a senior member reference writer by this section. This is very important. Just, it's not going to hurt the application. You can get this information from the candidate's resume application. Would you? Again, would you consider the candidate well qualified or qualified? I had a person uh, claiming that he had years of experience on a particular job, wrote up what all he had been doing. The catch was, as an experienced person in that engineering field, I looked at it and I said, oh, this boy never got off first base. He has 15 years, he has one year's experience 15 times. That's the sort of things that we're, the uh, senior members are looking for and to be able to say you're well qualified or qualified or gee, it's kind of thin. But what we also tell the reference writers is if you have a problem with the application, I tell my reference writer, contact me and tell me about it. We'll, we'll work on it. Uh, we had one, I had two of them, in fact, I looked at and I said, uh, look, the considering when you graduated and your work time, we can't overlap, so it's really looking thin. Let's wait six months, and we just held on to this application for six months and submitted it. By the way, both of those guys are senior members today. Significant performance. Again, this takes knowledge of the field and what the candidates said about it. That's what this is. You don't want to require the ANA panelists to have to read a novel, and you, nor do you want to have to write one. That's significant, folks. So remember, what all you write, somebody has to read. The better you can get it, uh, more exactly you can get it uh, presented, the better off you are. Key things the panelists are, is looking for is that evidence that you, the reviewer, believe the candidate meets required significant performance requirements. And in that, it's really very, very much like a professional engineer's application. 
Now, why is senior member status important? We have two main reasons. The percentage and number of senior members reflect the competence prestige of IEEE as products and services. Yes. If you're qualified to be a professional engineer, you're certainly qualified to be a uh, senior member of IEEE, provided you are a member. Senior members volunteer a higher percentage rate than do other grades. So by Am I supposed to tell you all that, that if we promote you to senior member, then you're obligated to help? Well, if I'm not supposed to tell you that, then pretend you didn't hear it. So why is that so important? Senior members and above have the highest re average retention rate of IEEE membership. I'll show you that great. Senior members tend to be more active in societies. And that is not just an IEEE member, but in my case, and I'll lean up where y'all can look at my shirt. My chapter is comprised of four societies, power and energy, uh, power electronics, industry applications, industry electronics. And I am most active in two of those. Uh, so especially uh, industry applications. Hey, they like me, they'll let me play around there, so I'm active. But it's generally the senior members who feel they have a vested interest in IEEE. That's why we want people to be senior members. Here's another thing. You can't be nominated to fellow if you're not already a senior member. Senior member section societies can, can nominate uh, uh, members to be elevated to senior member. So anyone can. Your section gets $10 for each successful elevation. So if you belong to the Houston section and I nominate you for elevation, Houston section gets it. It helps IEEE as a whole. I'm glad to do it. There is no additional fee for elevated to senior member grade. In fact, there's some benefits. Here's the graph we were talking about. Uh, the fellows, honorary members, life members, life, life fellows, life members, life senior member, and senior member, you see a pretty straight line across there. And then we go to regular members, associate members, and students, we see a very serious drop. Students tend to look at IEEE as, that was a college fraternity I belonged to. I don't need it in the real world. Trust me, I feel we need professional societies in the real world more than we know. So that's another reason pushing people up to senior members. How do we stand? Around the world, uh, at the as of August 19, uh, 2018, so I have not updated this yet. I don't know the figures are available, but for the various sections, pick out your section. What are your total members? How many are senior members? Look at your percentages. Now, I could at this point say, well, the average here is about 14 and a half. So we need to work on uh, R9 and R10 to bring their numbers up. No, that's wrong. We need to work on everybody because even where they're already up, they should be 25% as a minimum, not uh, 12 to uh, 16. And by the way, we're still working on R9 and R10. We'll get there. But we need, just because we're a little ahead, doesn't mean we're up where we, we should be at 25%. I'm convinced. Within the uh, uh, continental US, which is, uh, or no, this even has region 9 and 10. What are our goals? Let me move this so I can see real quick. Okay. Your today's senior members as of 2019. And what is our was our goal? 100. Uh, so we have exceeded our goal. But by the way, proudly, almost all of the uh, sections have. So uh, section seven is almost there. Section three, section four, almost there, but the others have exceeded. Good. Let's keep going. Let's keep expanding. 
when does the ANA panel meet? Well, for one thing, this is last year's schedule uh, because 2021 is not out yet, but look at what you're seeing, February, April, June, August, October, November. The 2021 schedule is going to be approximately like this. So if the meeting is uh, April 4th, that means all you have to do is get your application in April 3rd, right? Wrong. And hey, case hey, of April 4th, the cutoff was uh, uh, March 24th. It's about, it depends on where it is and when, it's 10 to 21 days before the meeting day. HQ is trying to work that down to seven days. So if we're talking February 15th, that means the cutoff would be the 8th of uh, February 8th. Right now, the cutoff could be anywhere from the 5th to uh, the 25th of January. We, they need time to get all the packets assembled, assigned, balanced out because they're dealing with thousands. Chris, how many thousand did you say they deal at each uh, panel meeting? <laughs> uh, I know personally, I do anywhere between 40 to 75 uh, applicants that I review. And that's over a course of a weekend. The one thing I want to um, reiterate in reference to the 2021 schedule, uh, it's normally on a quarterly basis that the panel will meet, depending upon the number of applicants, as well as the number of reviewers that have uh, volunteered to participate uh, in that uh, particular uh, session. Okay. So uh, I would uh, rule of thumb, if you will, it's on a quarterly basis and that uh, it's important that uh, you get your application in at least two weeks prior to that because they are actually putting those into stages uh, for the number of reviewers to understand if it's gonna be a, a full weekend or, or a, a the full weekend and, and a couple of days during that week. Uh, their goal is to go through the majority of those applicants and at least give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down in reference to their application uh, process. Uh, James, uh, we have about another. Um... Yes, I know. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh, so, uh, the big thing is, don't worry about if you miss it, it's gone, it's not coming around. Yes, these meetings do happen on a regular basis. If you miss one, you'll get the other. And with that, I have finished, and I will turn this back over to... Uh, Let's see, how do I? You just stop sharing it. Um, yeah. Okay, from, from a, a Q&A standpoint, I've, I've been trying to keep up with this as much as possible, so forgive me. Uh, but please no continue to ask your questions. What I will do is uh, copy and paste all these into a Word document, uh, along with the information that James said he wants to share in reference to a reviewer and how to properly write that uh, reference uh, letter. I'll be sending all of that out as well as PDH certificates for the 300 and about 325 people that actually participated in the uh, webinar. So I'm gonna take this first question uh, last. I'll take this last question first, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to be honored, James, because someone called me Christ. Hi, Christ. <laughs> Go ahead, George. What's the I'm, question? I'm still working on it. But um, an individual asked about that uh, they have uh, two degrees. And how would that count towards the number of years uh, if they can claim to be a uh, towards a senior membership? I will tell them that only the, uh, the first master's degree would count towards the time uh, for senior membership. It has to be either a, a bachelor or a time and work experience, bachelor's degree, master's degree and PhD. And it'll go back to that slide that you was talking about, James, in reference to how many years is counted towards each one of those. Right. Now, My uh, program was a five-year program, but sorry, IEEE counts four. Yeah. That's the rules. Someone asked down here at the bottom, missed the first part, do I have to be a PE to apply? No, you do not. Uh, that's only American Society of Civil Engineers. Uh, and I, but if you are a PE, it 
if you've been through that process, then you know you're well qualified to be an IEEE senior member. Uh, it's a little bit different, but some of the same. So that's all that connection. So whether you're a PE or not, you don't even have to be an engineer, just an IEEE member. With the, with the significant work experience. Now, uh, I, I stand corrected. Actually, the uh, the um, admissions and advancement uh, senior membership committee uh, meets six times a year and not uh, uh, four times uh, a year, uh, as I previously uh, stated. So uh, please forgive that oversight on, on my part. Um, going back to the questions here, To apply for a senior member, does do one need to be also a member of a certain society? James, I'm gonna let you answer that. Uh, of an IEEE society, no. Uh, a member of IEEE, yes. You are but correct. If sir. you are active in a society in IEEE, we we do not discourage that a bit. In fact, that's what we want. Now, one of the things, one of the things I will uh, uh, highly suggest for um, people who are looking at senior membership is that they get to know their local society as well as uh, their section, as well as other potential members uh, within their organization. Uh, it would be no different if I come and ask James, hey, James, I want you to give me a recommendation on my barbecue sauce, and you've never tasted my barbecue. And so he's only going off of what, what little information he knows about me and my barbecue sauce. And so in, in, reference, in reference to writing that compelling reference letter, at least for me, I like to understand a little bit more about that person so I can reflect the best that I can in, in reference to their, um, uh, their significant work experience. I don't know if you feel the same way, uh, James. Uh, well, if you wanted me to speak on your barbecue sauce i never tasted it but one thing i'd have to see the menu of your barbecue sauce table of contents mm -hmm. i would have to uh know how long have you been making it uh what successful applications have you used it notice i'm now looking to put the information together that's kind of what we're doing here i, I like that i like that barbecue texas analogy <laughs> thank you <laughs> Well, uh, here's a question. Uh, a person has a uh, both a bachelor's degree as well as a doctoral degree. Um, does that equal five years or nine years? Okay, now, has a bachelor's degree plus what? A uh, doctoral degree. No, that that's a total of, uh, of uh, what, six years? Six years, yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Because bachelor's four, master's is five, doctorate is six. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I just posted my full name and my IEEE uh, email number, which was the only email address I have. If you have any other email address for me, it's wrong. IEEE.org is the only one that you're going to get a response on. All right, so, we have a couple more questions before we uh, okay, please, the uh, next two, three minutes here. Uh, do I need to be an IEEE member for the entire 10 year duration to include 10 years of professional experience. Say that again. Do I need to be an IEEE member for the entire 10 year duration to include in my 10 years of professional experience? No, because we have people that uh, have met the experience requirements but are not IEEE members. Apply for IEEE membership online, it will be granted, and immediately you can turn around and apply for your senior member status. Okay. Yes, you can. Uh, somebody asked in California, A&A meets six times, but does that mean if I'm in California, then I will get six chances to be able to present my application at the A&A panel? Uh, yes, but you really only need one. If it's rejected <laughs> for some reason, we'll work on it, get it straightened up, and get it resubmitted. And I think that's very important, uh, James, is that uh, if if, it, if you reject it, find out the reasons why you got, uh, uh, wasn't approved at that point in time, I said it said rejected, not approved at that time, and work to get those areas clarified. Now, I've been doing this for a number of years, and uh, you can imagine if I do anywhere between 
40 to 75 of these uh, every six times a year. You can imagine how much I see these. And the one important thing is, and this is actually Mr. Mark Torres brought this, uh, is to really clarify that it is important that uh, a person present the best um, information about their significant work experience. If a person has to go and read between the lines and assume that you have the work experience, the likelihood of getting uh, uh, ev uh, approved for senior membership is is gotten lessened. is 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 not is not good. So please be sure to uh, present your the best picture that you can. I think that in your document, uh, James, you actually have some examples. Yes, I do. Okay. I showed them on the screen. Some of them are kind of chopped up. Uh, but when you get the email document, uh, the, uh, the Word documents, you're going to find things that were shortened are now written out and a fuller explanation, other details in there. Normally I would charge for that, but since you're IEEE members, uh, it's good. <laughs> Okay, uh, I got a, a few more of these questions, and if I okay. can't get through all of them, I'm going to make sure to put this in my Q and A document that will go out with your reference uh, information. Does being an IEEE student member count towards the IEEE membership? Not for senior member. Uh, you're, you're right; it does not count towards the yeah. senior membership. It does not. Now, but, it does. It does. It does count. It does count in reference if you go into a master's program. Yes. Yes. But but it. Uh, if you get your people, master's degree, we excuse. have we have people who are not IEEE members with twenty years of industrial uh, degree plus experience, degree or degrees plus experience, who decide to become IEEE members and immediately are eligible to apply for. Uh, senior membership. That's correct. So that's why your student membership doesn't count. It your student membership does count towards life member. It doesn't count towards senior membership. Your degrees count towards a uh, senior membership. You are correct. But but your your student membership counts towards life membership. That's just one reason I was able to get life membership uh, earlier than being a hundred years old. Uh, somebody else has a question up here. Oh, he's a, a retired life member. Is it too late to apply for senior membership? Absolutely not. I posted my email address up there. Shoot me a line. Okay. So now, folks, Christmas is coming up. And while y'all are celebrating Christmas, I will be in Panama and Colombia. So... I will have email access, but the most I'll give you is acknowledge, I got your stuff. We'll work on it in January. Look, I'm going down to party. Just, <laughs> I got a wedding to go to in Columbia. Uh, IEEE member and his fiance. So my brother's in Panama. So uh, don't expect a lot out of me in December. I'll come back to the States on December 30th. We can start working after New Year's. That sound okay for everybody? Well, James, you're, you're better than I am because uh, you gave out your email address to about uh, 350 some uh, participants. And so they probably will be contacting you. Uh, the, the one thing I want everyone to remember is this, is that uh, for the best support, you should definitely be working with your society as well as your sections to help with your, um, uh, with your senior membership application. And if you need additional uh, support, you definitely have the resources of the uh, senior membership uh, board, as well as uh, with uh, James and the rest of the IEEE USA uh, team. So uh, with that being said, we are about uh, four minutes uh, over. Uh, Mr. Mercer, do you have any uh, additional uh, things that you'd like to share before we uh, leave? Thanks for listening to me, folks. I hope I helped a little bit. Yes.
Yes, and uh, this is Daryl Griffin again. Uh, Chris, uh, James, uh, on behalf of IEEE USA, we want to say thank you so much for joining us uh, in doing this in partnership with us. And uh, thanks to the over 300 people who attended. Uh, as Chris said, um, he's going to be putting the question, uh, all the questions uh, in, a, in a Word document to uh, send to you guys. Uh, if you, he, they didn't get to your question, we had almost 70 questions. So... Uh, just know that we tried to get to all of them. Uh, that's all I have to say. Chris, if you want to end this out, I'm fine with that. Well, again, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, joining us. I thank you, uh, Mr. Mercer, for actually facilitating this uh, for us. Uh, we're all IEEE volunteers at the end of the day, and some of us who are not in retirement, uh, James, have to go back and do our regular uh, jobs now. But again, thank you, James, for your time and your efforts in de delivering this uh, to the uh, team here. Okay. Thank you, folks. Thank you for attending. All right. Thank you so much. All right. And that's about it. And so I'm uh, ending the webinar. Thanks so much. Yes, it was. The webinar was recorded and will be posted on the IEEE USA website. Uh, I'm guessing probably late next week. Uh, so uh, for those who are wondering. So that's about it. Thanks so much. Bye-bye, uh, everyone. Goodbye. Bye.